The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and proud with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 28. NASDAQ is up 61. S&P is up 4. Gold contract flat, 13.44 an ounce. We get silver up uh, 4 cents, $14.84 a an ounce. Light sweet crew down 32 cents, trading $52.19 a barrel. Notes and bonds, uh, bottom line, to get the 10-year note down one tick. 127.08, 30 year is off two at 154.09. They both continue to want higher price, low yield. King dollar, King dollar's uh, down 200 ticks, trading 96.865. Now, King dollar got some volume on Friday, um, had a good move. And that was some divergence because the bottom line is that you had gold go higher, then it gave it up on price. We'll go through that. Uh, bottom line, you get a lot of moving parts out here. Euro's at 112.42, the yen is trading at 108.58. And the pound is at 112.42 to one the U.S. dollar. I think we got to start adding Bitcoin back to that top of the line uh, info because we're up at 92.96. Look at that. Yeah, XBT. almost 840. I was going to cover it in the top of the hour update. Didn't quite get there with a lot wow. going on this morning. Um, yeah. But we talked about it as we we're getting set up for the program, right? You're talking about Facebook coming out with their potential crypto. I yes. think it was June 18th. Tomorrow they might be coming up with a, a white, with paper. white paper. Um, yeah. And it could. I mean, if you get a, if you get a, um, you know, company like the size of Facebook that starts integrating currencies right. into the platform reach they have, right. that could be pretty substantial. And, and inside of that, you get Visa yes, with them, right. Mastercard with them, PayPal with them. Yeah. Everywhere. It, what's happened, folks, is that everyone's putting. I think they, they all, it's, the article said they all put 10 million in. Okay. And, and with the article. And they take a billion out. No, sorry. Well, the, well, the <laughs> right. article is saying that. Um, MasterCard and Visa specifically, we're going to put it in just to find out what they're doing. Sure, you want to be involved. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. You, know, but you can see how it could. And so this catching a pop on that as well. And right. we we're talking about Facebook up uh, continuing Friday action because that news coming out Friday. But Facebook over the weekend, I think investors even like it. I mean, look at the gap yeah. on Friday, and then boom, it gaps even higher. It's pretty right. remarkable when you look at. Uh, can you still get what the low was on Thursday? Uh, two days. No, one more. Yeah, because, I mean, we're, yeah, so we're up $12 on $174 stock in two days. I mean, just huge percentage. When do you think about it? Facebook wasn't going away? You know, when you can right. pull 6 7% off a of stock in two days like Facebook. Pretty intense. That is. Let's take a look at some of the higher volume. Well, here, let's go look at the gold contract first. So the gold contracts, folks, in a, in a complex ABC structure up. Uh, what that means is that, you know, we took out the B point on Friday. You took it out with volume. Then you gave it up on price. So when you do that, like you can see on Friday, we did uh, 358,000 contracts. You took out 331. And when you give it up on price, what happens, you know, most times is that it turns into a complex one. And what that means is that you back down. We're back down this morning. You, you looks like we're going to have maybe lighter volume. And that's what we're going to need. Then it normally just makes another run for it again. You know, so we'll see how this shakes out. But... Uh, that was quite a move, and that's yeah. when, you know, if we go look at the dollar, you're going to see, so gold started the day off great. I think when we just, we're you're actually, talking about Friday now, yeah, right? Friday. Yeah, Friday. We, we actually, we just, uh, let's see, what is that? That's early, early in the morning. It was actually at night was the, I think the run you're looking at. Yeah, right. Okay, so when it's we like started. like in the morning. Yeah. Right. And then if we go over to the dollar, what you're going to see is that the dollar, caught a bid right which doesn't correlate right yes you don't usually have the dollar strengthen as you have the price of gold go up right. in dollars in dollars right. and you know you can see here i mean you know that's good volume thirty-five thousand. Yes. now what you do have you were you were going from one contract to another but that still doesn't matter it's still good contract volume now we'll see how it shakes out you know we get over this today underneath it but yeah it doesn't look like no one's selling it's only seven seven thousand seven hundred sure. uh, contracts so. sure you know, that sets up that, guess what, uh, we'll get the Fed Wednesday. Yes. And so the, it's going to be all about the statement, folks, okay, because the probability is that they're not going to cut rates this meeting. 18.2%. Right. 
And the next meeting, however, is basically six weeks, you know, from Wednesday, which is uh, July 31st, it goes up to 82%. Decent so, rise, decent yeah, rise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the market's going to be looking for like, just how dovish are you going to be? Is the Fed going to be? Sure. And then to bring it up all the way to September, right? I like looking at the odds that we get two by September because realistically yes. one's all but assured. Right. Um, so what are the odds we start getting two in these meetings? And um, pretty remarkably, you get to 56% by September. Yeah. And 47 by October. So the market's saying there's almost a 50 basically 50% chance of two hikes are coming by September, October. And then the question is, well, when do we get three then? Oof. And you're at about a one out of three that you get three hikes somewhere in the range of December. Cuts, right? Oh, yeah, I know, yeah, right? No, it's so used to hikes. I know. Uh, that three, hi that, three cuts coming yeah. by December, January, March, which is remarkable when you think about that 75 basis points um, yeah. potentially by December. Um, cutting from where we are right now and the base one right now 2.25 to 2.5 this column um, where we're sitting at right now so the market's saying on June 19th Wednesday we're still going to be sitting 81.8 percent yeah pretty wild well look at that statement yeah be an interesting uh love to everybody love to be a little fly on that wall of that meeting and just hearing what they're talking about right Big that time. would be yeah uh, so we take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. Uh, yeah, this might as well talk about it now. It's right at the top. Yep, you ten point six four billion. Not a bad number. That is one big number, isn't he it? Said, he said, right? He said, ah, ten billion. Quite a number. Said, Don't forget about the point six four. That's six hundred and forty million. Seriously. Uh, and yeah, look at that. So where so, were they trading at? Uh, so about thirty. Man, yeah, they're trading at about thirty, and they're up more than fifty percent. Yeah, so fifty percent premium on what it was trading at on Friday, as Pfizer look buys at that. that. Yeah. Look, this is an all-time high. This is pretty Look intense. At, what, what, what's the 2016 low? Can I? Like, right here? Yeah. $2.38, cents. not bad. Wow. So you're looking at uh, a 20-bagger in the span of four years. Yeah. Let's go look at this. Now we cover. Many times you get a zero-bagger when, oh, yeah. when you're in these. But yeah. look yeah. at that revenue, man. Yeah. Wow. So you went from... 51 million in 2015 to 274 million this year. 365 next year. Big numbers. Yeah. Can yeah. you go to the description? What do they do exactly? Um, I believe it's a cancer drug that they bought. Um, research company uh, creates drug candidates. The company provides drug discovery products and services to create, evaluate, optimize potential drug candidates in collaboration with pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Yeah, and there you go. Wants to offer cancer sufferers a multitude of treatment options. Uh, development, um, development stage biopharma company, handful of programs in its development pipeline, three late stage cancer candidates. Yeah. Um, so 10.46, wow. billion dollars as mm. Pfizer beefs it up. And Pfizer, I saw they were down about eight tenths, maybe a percent. Uh, yeah, it seems like they've scaled Not back. Bad, so huh? No, right? Wow. No, market market is okay with paying 50 percent premium on. Uh, not bad, right? Friday, no. the company's worth six point something billion. Today, it's uh, ten plus billion. Not bad. Perception. Well, wow, this was a perception. This was their pay in. Not, reality really changes. Yeah, 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 that was Reality Friday. That's Reality Monday. Right. Reality changes quickly sometimes. Right. right. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go take a look at that uh, oil market. So uh, it's pretty amazing that you know you have those tensions still at the Strait of. Hummus. 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 I, I believe. I know. Yeah. We're all learning how to say um, that right now. But guess what? Oil's not moving, man. No. You know, fifty-two twenty-one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now. They are trading up twenty-eight. Come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, Dow. Dow right now uh, up 15. You get the Nasdaq up 52. S&Ps are up two and a half. And the the, the uh, Nasdaq uh, it's got a little juice in it. Oh, this it morning, sure does, man. You know. Yeah. So you're up uh, six uh, tenths of one percent. We go inside that NDX 100 and take a look at the strength versus the weakness. Uh, uh, you get INCY Insight up 4.4. Uh, that makes sense because that's I think a biotech too, right? You get a biotech deal happening. Yeah. Bio develop commercializes small molecule drugs. Oh, Not bad. Now small. they yeah, I was two, gonna say two billion dollars. I looked at the market cap for them, seventeen billion wow. when um Array just got ten point six and they were actually six before the buyout. So yeah. yeah. You got Semantic up three and a half percent. Netflix. Netflix is catching a bit. They sure are, man. Yeah. That's up uh, three percent. Taken away from it, you got uh Align Technologies down two point three. Um, Mondelez, right? Yeah, Mondelez, that's the spin-off from Kraft, that's down 1%. What's probably not up there because it's not a percentage, but yeah. it'll be his Facebook, you know, putting some yes. serious um, oomph into yeah. uh, that NASDAQ there's, number there's for sure, no doubt. up almost five bucks. Yeah. The, uh, I heard Elon Musk is, uh, what, he's, he's going to end Twitter now? He deleted, he, he, not end Twitter, he deleted his Twitter account. And he let everybody know that by using his Twitter account, <laughs> that he deleted his Twitter account. Just deleted my Twitter account. If it was April Fool's, it would make sense. And then, uh, it's like nobody really knows what's going on. Is it a joke? Is it? And he also changed his name. You can change this. Anybody can to just your kind of username. Daddy.com. Yeah, I don't know what. Uh, so maybe he was just, oh, uh, maybe he was having a little fun Father's with Father's Day. I guess. But where's the deleted? You know, the daddy.com I get on Father's yeah. Day. Um, <laughs> and what's really interesting is that. I mean, that, that on most situations, that wouldn't be anything material that anybody would care about. Yeah. It would be material if he actually deleted his Twitter account, because I think that a lot of people would like that, right? Because there's a lot more risk of what he has to say versus right. reward to be right. a shareholder. Right. Um, so he's out there saying, I deleted it. Obviously, he didn't, because he's tweeting it out, but uh, nonetheless, interesting. Pretty wild. Yeah. If we go to, uh, let's pull up Deutsche Bank. Can because, we actually see yeah. how Tesla's trading on? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Tesla. TSLA. They've been, they haven't made any news recently, and as a result, it's been trading higher. <laughs> yeah. Up five bucks. Not bad. Five man. bucks, right? yeah. The um, Deutsche Bank. So yeah. uh, 
What you got? They're going to separate things out a little, right? I think and they, create they, their, they, their bad like bank of, they, of... Bad doesn't impress the animals. Let's see. Yeah. The top one, yeah. Deutsche Bank jumped on reports the lender is moving ahead with an overhaul, mulling an exit from U.S. equity trading while creating a non-core unit to wind down as much as $56 billion. The stock climbed 4% on Monday, uh, supporting European banks. This, this thing's going south, man. I mean, just... Deutsche Bank's plan isn't aggressive enough. Oh, this is, uh, this is a... Um, yeah, these are various analysts, yeah. just say. Uh, the plan leaves the lender exposed to material losses from its uh, CIB unit. They're just... You, you know, it's amazing, man. I mean, like, the whole world knows that... They don't know how much more is on those books that they're not reporting, but <laughs> it's a lot. Yes, <laughs> it's, yeah. That's, you know, it's like, what is that number, you know? Yeah, so creating that bad bank of right. bad goods, but guess what? They still exist as uh, bad goods. Oh, yeah. So they're, and one of the analysts said, now, like, they're behind the curve, right? It's yeah. like this is, might be a case, being kind probably, it might, of too yeah. little, too late, at right. least too late when right. you look at that stock um, oh. chart. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. As soon as you broke that 786, it's like, here, it's 689. It's like, okay, man. Oh, I mean, you look know. at I mean, you really have to go back to the beginning of 2014. To where, I mean, that's a straight downtrend from $40 to yep. 6 yep. without, you know, no reprieves. You're talking about barely. And it is a reprieve. You got from under 10 to 19 to almost 20. So you <laughs> doubled it. But then like we up. always look at, right, that's, that's barely a retracement from when you went to 40 to 10 to 20 to 0. Who knows? Yeah. That, that is something else. There's, there's no doubt about that. It's yeah. a monster. The... Um, Let's go uh, inside. Oh, yeah, so bowling is all over the place today, meaning in the news. Yes, lots of right? divergent. Uh, yeah. They're the, saying, the Airbus one, right? The order? Yeah. No, go ahead. There's a bunch. Where are we, where well, are we starting off? They're, from? They're, so, yep, 520. Almost was, flat, you call was, it, a $350 yeah. stock. Uh, let's see. It's Number it, two is the Airbus one. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. I'm, I'm looking for the one that goes all... Oh, here it is. Okay, that's the top. It's the, so Boeing chief executives threw his support behind the 737 MAX aircraft with the prediction that the plane will reclaim its position as a single aisle workhouse, for, workhouse. workhouse yeah. following upgrades on the model that's been grounded since March. Speaking on the first day of the Paris Air Show, the CEO reconfirmed his confidence that the MAX will return to service before the end of the year and that the plane will remain the backbone of the country's shot haul strategy for years to come. What was interesting was I saw tidbits, just highlights of this interview, and at one point he said, we're not going to put um, a time frame on this or something. You know, like, okay. I'm not going to get a lot. And then, like, in the very next breath of his, it's like, I expect it to happen this year, that it'll be back. And I was like, that's a time frame you just put on it, that it's supposed to come back this year. All right. Um, I was just looking even if they covered that in the... Uh, in the article. I mean, of course, I almost want to say, of course he's going to say that. Is Look at that. CEO? Given that more than 4,000 MAX aircraft still in the auto backlog, Bogan has no plans to accelerate the development of Boeing a successor. Has, yeah. And that's where, so of course, 4, I mean, that's what, planes. you know, what do you expect the CEO to say? They have an order for 4,000 planes, <laughs> he's, and he's saying, like, we plan to deliver them. Okay. Yeah, of course you do. I, I wonder if people are going to want to fly on them. Uh, yeah, right. So, and again, right. of course, he's going to say, well, they'll be safe. Of course they will. And who's going to be the first one? Yeah. <laughs> and as, we found, out, first as we found out last week, right, the first one is they're going to force their employees on there. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, I, uh, yeah, I guess it would be Boeing flying Boeing employees, right? That's, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so when you, that's the rhetoric from their CEO, when yeah. you bring in the reality of what's happening at the Paris Air Show, you got Airbus locking up a huge deal, man. Um, so Airbus won its first order for a longer range model. Let's see, the A321 XLR. It's almost good. If you know the name of the plane, like the Max, it's bad news, right? I don't yeah. know what this is. Um, and pressed its advantage over rival Boeing, which is still trying to get um, its most popular narrow body back into the sky. So gave details on the first day of the Paris Air Show and said Air Lease Corp ordered 27 as part of a 100 plane contract with 11 billion at list prices confirming an earlier report. And I think that Air Lease Corp is one of the largest leasing companies in the world. Okay. Yeah. So the with the A321 LXLR, so I guess extra long range XLR, Airbus has succeeded in beating Boeing to the market for a new offering for middle distance routes such as between Central Europe and the U.S. heartland 
Um, Boeing has been weighing a $15 billion investment in a jet it calls the new mid-market airplane, or NMA. So I guess it's a separate plane, right? This wouldn't be competing with the 737 MAX, maybe, because they're looking for a little bit more long yeah. distance. So this is a variant of Airbus best-selling A320neo family and will fly 15% further than the existing LR, aided by extra fuel capacity and increase its maximum takeoff weight to 101 metric tons. Pretty wild. And look at they got JetBlue, Norwegian Air. They're going to be in there as potential buyers um, on Friday. Urge Boeing to go ahead with the planned uh, range of 5,000, saying 5, they have capabilities your European plane can't match. So that's yeah. a little highlight for Jet um, Boeing there. 5,000 is a long way. Man. Yeah, that's a long way for Forget sure. To... 877-927-6648. We have the Dow folk, uh, folks up by 45, Nasdaq's up 55, S&P's up four and a half. Tell me how to come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 57. Nasdaq's up 59. S&P's are up five and a half. Uh, let's go over, uh, take a look at Amazon out here. So Yeah, we're almost up 20 bucks now. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's interesting. So, I mean, you know, Mondays, Fridays, folks, summer trading, you know, you're not going to get a lot of volume in these markets, but uh, it's a decent bid, man. You're uh, at 1888. It's going into a swing of 1893. 
It hit 1895. It doesn't, let's see, so that's 4 million. Yeah, you could do 4 million today. It's yeah. only an hour into the marketplace. Sure, right. We just did a million. Yeah. So it's a Monday. You'd get uh, maybe a little bit more action than the Friday in the summer, you know, in terms of. Uh, yeah, that is, it's, you know, Mondays, Fridays, it's not, it's, it is yeah. what it is. It's, I like to group in. People have a much more higher likelihood of being at their desk on a Monday than a Friday. Oh, in yeah. The for summer, sure. As in, that's, that's. Your opportunity. It's just vacation yeah. start. Yeah, that's, that's, sure. that's what it's down to. Uh, you know, if you're if you're into the uh, metals market, folks, uh, X A U H U I, they all did ABC structures on the way up. So if we take a look at this, I'm, I'm not going to be able. To, well, let's see if they corrected it yet. You can see on the uh, X A U, uh, what we had here is that you did. Uh, let's see, we did volume out here of 37 million. You're One taking Friday. out 33. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, why do you see this? The, the gold bugs index had a bad tick and it wasn't fixed this morning. Oh, good, they fixed, they fixed it. Thank it, God. Yeah. Because. It was like out of this stratosphere. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. It messed it, up everything. It had put it up to $800. Yeah. So let's see if this did it too. So. Yeah, it's, well, it's not really neat. It's almost 26 up. million. Yeah. That's 20, 20, but you, yeah. So you had, a, you had a decent day Friday. Yeah, you did. No, did. there's no doubt. And, yeah. you, and you're pressing into the highs of um, February 20th. Okay. That had 64 million. 64 million? Ooh. Yeah, you're going to need a lot more volume than that. And we just did uh, 25 million. So yeah. that will need uh, a lot more than that. Yeah. Maybe let's, that was Fed action in February or something. Something was going on. Yeah. So let's, let's look at the GDX for one of our tigers here. <coughs> now this is going to get interesting because same th well let's see that's 62 million GD oh GDX yeah 62 versus 42 yeah you're going to need more volume to get up and over this thing weeklies did what 248 yeah one we did so the prior week <clears throat> two weeks ago we did 262 last week we did 177 now it was a full week last week, right? It sure was. Okay, we're gonna need more volume here. We're gonna we're definitely gonna need more volume to take that. Well, we might. We're gonna get the Fed on Wednesday, so that's, oh, good, that's, that's yeah. gonna add some volatility to the gold sector. Oh, for that's sure. the number. Yeah, that's. And it's gonna be just you know, what kind of path are they gonna take us? Um, you know, meaning how dovish are they yes, going to be? For sure, because they know that the market is expecting that rate hike come next month. Right. So you're either gonna see them somewhat confirm that without explicitly saying it, or you're going to see them back away from it. Expectation is they're going to confirm it, as in they're going to take out the word patient because they're not going to be patient. It's coming next month. They kind of know it. That's that's the sentiment. That's yeah. what you're going to be looking for right. to see if um, their words confirm that. How about Sotheby's, right? We were looking I at know. this article. Pretty yeah. cool. So uh, Sotheby's getting sold for $2.7 billion, essentially to a private buyer, um, Patrick Drahi gentleman work up worth 8.6 billion and uh, he is in a, an art investor a businessman himself but pretty remarkable so you had um, yeah almost a 57 percent premium that that gets bought for it's a big number big number for sure and um, can we go into Sotheby's so it's bid right yep. um, because we were looking at their financials they take in a billion dollars of revenue a year but guess what they're gonna do that in 2020 and they did that in 2017 right so you got no growth over three years of revenue um and in that same time you, you do have some marginal earnings growth but pretty remarkable things are going well from 17 to 20 right and we talked about you know it's really remarkable when you look at the prices of the fees that they charge I know. for basically a glorified ebay right you know and right. yeah they definitely provide a service of bringing in whatever kind of money right you got to find the billionaires and bring them to the to the plate yes. to, to be buying it sometimes anonymously so there's different factors but when you start talking about fees that are tens of millions of dollars yeah. i like, see I, that as i don't know the exact but let's say it's 20 to 30 percent it's yeah. like really out of like a hundred million dollars right it's like, and you have things getting sold for hundreds of millions of right. dollars you know and then you think, million how are you going to make money on it well uh, you know so picture even just one right. paint that gets sold three times let's say in 15 years five 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 and let's say if Let's say it was just a million. We keep it, and they get two hundred thousand, two four six. So you get six hundred thousand taken out of it yes. in fifteen years. Right. Is it worth two million? Oh, well, you know. Yeah, and I, I I look at it more as, you know, where's the competition 
because it seems like there should be competition where somebody comes in this market, maybe it's Facebook with their new crypto, and they say, hey, why don't you sell it on our product, man, and we'll charge you a 1% VIG. Yeah. So we'll see. But that investor has different ideas, as yeah. he obviously sees, and, and he might be right that he says, what are you guys doing here? You know, you took in a billion in 2017, you're right. going to take a billion in 2020 at a time when, and look at, look at 2015, they were almost there. So right. you got no growth over five years. And you, you know, it's um, possible that, and when I was looking at, when you look at this guy's bio, folks, <clears throat> it's possible that he could be just buying this so he gets first dibs <laughs> at, because he's a big art collector, right? Sure. He, he? he owns a big telecom company. Um, that's how he looks like he's made his money, but he's a big art collector. So it's like if you, if, if you own the company, guess what? You're going to have four, first dibs on, on what is out there and what things actually where the market is. Yeah, right now, yeah. You know? I mean, you definitely have a better pulse because you'd get to see everything coming right. in and, and who's looking to sell stuff, right? What do they think they want to put it up for right. auction? Um, so he's the president of Altice Europe NV, a publicly traded telecommunications telecommunications business, more than 30 million customers, worth yeah. 8.6 billion, avid art collector, as yeah. you said. So uh, he's familiar with the industry. Um, his latest purchase is a surprise move for a man known for telecoms empire he built, which grew out of a stirring of debt financed acquisitions in France before eventually expanding in the U.S. in 2015. So he intends to monetize a small piece of the U.S. business for as much as 400 million to fund the Sotheby's deal. Uh, so he bought it at, at two billion, right? Is that what it said? Two? And he only needs four hundred million, is that? Sorry, I didn't uh, uh, what was the price yeah. that he paid? Oh, two point seven, I believe. Yeah, two point seven. Yeah. So it's intriguing that like is that is that what yeah. it means that that's all he's gonna put four hundred million yeah. up that's not and leverage twenty percent. Yeah. I guess I mean, that's, you know, Yeah, and then you get the guy's cash flow. You get twenty percent right? equity. And right. um it was right for Sotheby's to go private said, uh, so this is the CEO of a fine art group and former Christie's executive. Christie's has more advantages being run privately and not having public quarterly reporting. Um, so there you go. And that is their competitor, probably Christie's uh, Sotheby's. Right. And um, I guess they, you know, they're not in the arena of needing public money left and right. So with that out right. of the situation, they can not have to worry about quarterly reporting. It's and, a longer term planning, yeah, right? That's, yeah. that's what it really comes down to. And like you said, I think he knows the industry. It's probably something he doesn't see at massive losses. But man, I just fundamentally, like I said, that's a lot of money to be charging just for an auction when it's companies like eBay out there that they yeah. don't charge hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 64, NASDAQ up 64, S&P's up six and a half. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, appreciate you growling and following us. And we're talking about growling and prowling with us uh, this coming Wednesday, folks. Uh, Steve Dahl and myself, we are going to be doing, well, Steve is going to do the, the, the bulk of this. Uh, I, I happen to use this scanner, the profile scanner, you know, every day. Um, great workshop. It's going to be coming up uh, Wednesday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't checked out the uh, profile scanner yet, folks, easy, real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, right at the featured content. Yeah, so 5 o'clock, right following your program. You guys will be in there for an hour, and uh, Steve's going to be Jacob breaking down, you know, how he uses this scanner, the three-point system that he uses to scan the market, looking for trading opportunities, yeah. whether what time frame you're looking for. And uh, new subscribers, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you want to come on over here, Steve's got a beautiful, nice little message for yeah, everybody. Man. He's talking about He made this yeah. just for the That's workshop. Awesome. So he's all fired up, man. He's yeah. in there. He's ready. It's just 47 seconds. But he wanted to say hello, kind of a brief message about what he's going to be talking about with you on Wednesday night. And um, I always encourage people, man, get over there if you really want a quick introduction. We got 12 different videos. This is completely free. You can go check them out right now. Uh, welcome message from Steve at his trading desk and then he just breaks down a number of the features man and he'll be going really in depth in these features right. uh, with you on Wednesday night talking about how to use that scanner because um, it's not like a newsletter right where you order it you get the newsletter you know what's going on right the, you know you right you know they'll tell you you get this immediately when you sign up but then you got to figure out kind of how you're using it exactly because right? it's a powerful piece of software right. right so that's where Wednesday night should be great and of course that'll be archived for subscribers um, on the members page and great time to check it out if you haven't tried it yet check that out it's a powerful piece of scanning software and uh, Wednesday should be a good deal 60 minutes big time it's hard to believe that uh, we're already June 19th oh my god June, it's gonna be July 4th man before we know it we're like two weeks away from the, the fourth maybe two and a half actually but yeah god. you know uh, so this morning folks you had the Fed uh, New York Fed factory gauge drop by a record to a two-year low let's see what this is saying so the Federal Reserve gauge of factories in New York's plunged in June by the most on record adding to signs Tariffs are weighing on the manufacturers in the broader economy. The New York Fed Empire State Manufacturing Survey main index fell by 26.4 points to a minus 8.6, the lowest level since October 2016, indicating more respondents said business conditions had worsened rather than improved. Almost all the sub-indexes dropped, led by declines in new orders and unfilled orders. Let's see what else this is. So, and just to finish, the forecast was that it was only going to drop by 11 to 17.8. So it dropped by 26 to a minus 8. Quite a miss on the expectation line as well. Yeah, big time. Um, so new orders fell to a three-year low, while unfilled orders dropped to the lowest level since 2015. The unemployment... The employment index posted its first negative reading in two years, suggesting a pullback in the number of workers, while the average work week shortened. The six-month outlook also deteriorated, but still remains above 
in line with its average in recent months. And I guess so the, the period that they were surveying yeah. coincides with, uh, reflects the peak Mexico tariff fear, which coincided with the survey response period. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which would make sense, oh, right? Yeah. But I don't know if that's necessarily gone away completely. Um, so it's the first of a series of regional Fed surveys due and released in the next two weeks. See how those come out, right? We got Philadelphia Fed's measure on Thursday, and uh, the regional gauges have generally been trending downward in the past year. So that's kind of your, 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 whoops. Your graph of all of them, and you don't have to be a genius to see the downtrend there, man. Totally. Yeah. Now let me look because there's a builders index too that looks like it took a hit. Let's see. Uh, oh, look at that. See, it jumped. There's back. a lot of news it, this morning, it is. man. We'll find it, it, it but there is. There's jumped, a lot of news. It jumped back off the page. It sure did. Um, there we go. Number 14. Number 14. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Uh, U.S. home builder sentiment unexpectedly post first drop in 2019. Sentiment among, among U.S. home builders unexpectedly posted the first decline this year, suggesting lower mortgage rates are failing to give the housing market a sustained boost amid property prices that remain out of reach for many buyers. National Association of Home Builders uh, fell two points to 64 in June. All three components declined, with sales expectation hitting a four month low. Readings above 50 indicate. More builders view conditions. Excuse me, folks. As poor, rather no, than as good. As good than poor. Rather than poor. Yeah. So it's still above that level, but like we always talk about, it's it's all about expectations, you know. If you say, oh, Amazon made a billion dollars, well, it's great. But if market thought they're going to make two billion, yes. stock's going down, you know. Um, so things are priced into the market. Then you find out the reality. This was not priced in exactly, so to put things, you know. Um, so home builders cited rising costs for development and construction, along with concern over trade issues and labor shortages, according to the report. The figures contrast with some signs that the housing market's picking up as a gauge of mortgage, mortgage applications jumped earlier in the month yeah. by the most in four years, while new home construction advanced in March and April. Yeah. The, the rates make a huge difference. Oh, for and sure. That's what I thought. Know, I mean, they're almost completely separate issues, right? Yeah. As in, like, okay. That's going to bring people out for mortgages, but that doesn't necessarily mean if that the housing is too expensive deep into the market. Right, right. right. Yeah. It's the, the the cost structure is expensive. There's no doubt about it. And, yeah. You know, it's really hard if you haven't been in the housing market and you got some expansion of the house that you already have to even move. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like okay, so how do you start off? Sure. I mean, you know, when when I started off, guess what? Houses were fourteen thousand dollars. That was sure. my first house. Sure. When you started off. What a couple hundred thousand, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so someone's caught. But in fairness, there's still a couple hundred thousand wherever you are if you're in a certain area. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where no, we're no. going in like the um, city. Yeah, um, no, I'm with you there. But that's still a lot. Uh, that's it is a couple know. hundred thousand for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, when you start especially because three fifty or something, that's a different ballgame. It is, yeah. it is. But most of the time, that's where you're around the city, where there's going to be jobs right. that are going to provide the ability. And that's why those markets are priced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We go and take a look at this uh, ten year. You're going to see this thing will not back off. Uh, now, it's pretty impressive that we have markets that you know are up slightly, but yet that ten year will not back off. Yeah, I mean, you're right at the highs. I mean, this has been the same highs we've been at now for two weeks. But guess what? When you stay up at these highs uh, and you don't back off, ten oh, years ready for Fed Week, man. It is. <laughs> it is. And it's know, been ready since uh, April yeah. 15th, almost, right? Yeah, I know. It's pretty amazing. Man. How about Domino's? They're going to be. Uh, oh yeah. Dry, is it pizza? Pizza? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Um, we can be at the news if. Uh, come on. Can you? Oh, Domino, sorry. <laughs> and he's reading the den, folks. I he's am. cluing in. It's Domino. like we're doing a live show here. He just stops typing and starts reading the den. But no, I think it's pizza, is it? Uh, no? Is that Pizza Hut? Let's see. Oh, no, D-O-M. No? That's in the... That's just keep typing. Yeah. D-P-Z. There it is, yeah. So wait you see this, folks. Look at this. This, this is a rocket ship, man. This, this guy, when he started this business, he just changed... Oh, I mean, he was the first delivery guy. I mean, that really could that make a business out of it. You know what I mean? Because they had asked him, I, I know I've told you this before and I've told the audience before, they had asked Tom Monahan, he's the guy that started, 
you know, with businesses, he's selling the delivery business, sure. not the pizza business. Yeah. You know, and that's, and so what this is, uh, is going to be about is that now they get uh, autonomous delivery, or they're going to start gonna, it. Right? Yeah, I think it's in Houston. They were at $4 in 2008. So you know you see Tom Monaghan, CEO that came in. We'll pull up his name, too, yeah. because you could say it's it's his. Uh, now the owner's everything, right? But the CEO, man, he came in when the stock was at 4 bucks. It's sitting at 282 got to love it. Whew. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we're talking dominoes. So uh, look at this. Uh, this is pretty wild. Domino Pizza teams up with robotics company Neuro. I believe so, Neuro. To test automated delivery in Houston, Texas. Look at this picture. So that little automated vehicle, no driver, is going to be showing up to houses with your piping hot pizza ready in that oven. Yeah. And you enter a little combo maybe and open that door and there's your pizza sitting there and, and that's what you got to do you got you got to you got to wait for it well you probably track it by your phone when it's outside you do it you sure, come out right. and pick it up yeah so uh it's teaming up with neuro uh, pilot program in houston later this year um it's living food and dry cleaning look at this yeah the r2 unmanned vehicle uh it'd be interesting i don't know how the regulations work right because we said okay they're not driving around people so that's one thing that you might have less regulations but what happens if that vehicle that's not driven by anybody runs somebody over or runs yeah. into a car runs right. into um i i wonder how that 
plays out. Um, so Neuro has raised more than a billion from investors, including Greylock and SoftBank, and has a partnership with Kroger. So that's where I'd seen that little vehicle before in yeah. terms of dropping off oh, groceries okay. for Kroger. Um, they were principal engineers at Google, self-driving project Waymo, which oh. would make sense, right? You're coming from there. And, um, and as we were talking about it, too, their, their last CEO had stepped down in December of, uh, yeah. where were we, right? Is this the one? That's the guy that really made the run happen, though, because we yeah. just looking at the chat. Their yeah. turnaround CEO. So he came in in 2009, um, December of 2009, when the company was at seven bucks, and he left. What's remarkable is he left when it was at 200, though. I mean, the run just does not stop. 240, stopped. right? Um, 280. 280. That's what I was, uh, you know, and, and look at the run from, uh, you know, it doesn't right back there. You're trading at 230. Domino's Pizza. Little little automated robots dropping yeah. off those those delicious yeah, pizzas. Well, totally. Stay right there, folks. We got fast market coming up next, and we got a treat for you. Our uh, man uh, Larry Pizzavelli is going to do Basil's uh, program. Double duty. I love yeah. it. Double Steve Larry. Rhodes, Can't Dave beat White. It. Exactly. Nice stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, go get him, folks.